Hello everybody, welcome. I hope you're having a happy Sabbath if you are actually watching this on Sabbath. Um, we just ask that you'll bow your heads with us as we start our Bible story with prayer, okay? Dear Father in Heaven, thank you for being with us and thank you for blessing each one of us today wherever we are. Um, help us to always remember that you love us and that you want to know what's happening and um, that you want us to know the plans that you have for each one of us and that you're with us. And help us as we go through our story to understand in your name. Amen. All right. Thank you for being with us today. Our story today comes from the Bible and you know that all the stories in the Bible are true that they are stories that really happened and we're going to um, start with a little bit about the prophet Isaiah um, God called him in a special way and Isaiah said here I am send me and God wanted Isaiah to um, tell his people that he loved everybody and that he wanted the whole world um, to know about him and he wanted the whole world to be saved if they would just believe in him and trust him. So Isaiah was a faithful prophet who did that. Um, another prophet that's part of our story today is found in our Bible right here. Um, more than half of the way through the Bible in the book of Jonah. And you can see we found something in our Bible um, that helps us to tell a story about Jonah. Jonah um, was called by God one day to go to a big, huge city, to go to the city of Nineveh to tell the people that if they didn't turn from their evil ways, if they didn't stop doing their own thing, and, and if they didn't stop um, um, believing in other gods and following other things, if they didn't choose to leave that and to love God with all their hearts, God was going to destroy their city in 40 days. So um, Jonah was asked by God to do that, and instead of going to Nineveh to preach and to tell the people what God was going to do because God always warns people before he does things um, Jonah decided to go the other direction so he went down and to where the ships were and he got on a boat and instead of going to Nineveh he was going to go like I said the other way so he got on the ship and a huge storm came up. It was very dark and the wind was blowing and the rain was coming down and there was lightning and thunder and it was terrible and the sailors got really scared. Um, they didn't know what to do. They, um, they, they got everybody together and they s told everyone pray to your gods and ask your gods to help us to save us and so all of the other sailors on the ship as it was going up and down and they couldn't get control of it they started praying and calling out to their god to help them and nothing happened so then they decided we gotta find out whose fault this is. They also started looking for Jonah because they realized he wasn't with them. So they went down into the bottom of the ship and they found Jonah and Jonah was fast asleep. He'd been sleeping through the whole storm. He totally missed a whole bunch of it because he was just, he was fast asleep. How could he sleep through all that? They brought him up and they cast lots. I'm not exactly sure what casting lots is like. Maybe like drawing straws. You know, somebody has, they, they have different sizes of straws. One this long and a little bit shorter, a little bit shorter. And whoever gets the short one, that's the person. So I'm not sure if that's what they did or something else. But they cast lots and it came out that this was all Jonah's fault. And they already knew that Jonah was running from his God, but they asked him anyway. They said, you know, who are you? Who's your family? What country are you from? What is your job? What do you do? 
um, why is this happening to us? And he told them again, he said, I'm Jonah, I am, um, you know, I, my God asked me to go and to preach in the city of Nineveh, and instead of obeying my God, I went a different direction, and, and this is because of, this is all because of me. And they said to him, well, what can we do? Tell your God to, to, to save our lives and to stop this. Pray to your God and ask him. And Jonah said, there's only one thing that will work. You're going to have to throw me out into the water over the side of the ship. That's the only way that you're going to be safe. Oh, they did not want to do that. You can see in our picture over here that that is the last thing they wanted to do. And before they did that, before they could even think about doing that, they said, let's throw stuff out first. So all of the cargo that they had with them on their ship, they took everything. If they had um, produce or if they had grain, if they whatever was in their ship that they were taking from one port to another, they took all that stuff and they threw everything over the side of their ship and there was nothing left to throw. They thought, well, if we make it lighter, it won't sink so easily. But the storm didn't quit and the boat was still going up and down and they couldn't get control of it. And Jonah said, you have to throw me over. And they all begged God to forgive them because they just knew if it was like killing him. If they threw him over, he would die and it would be their fault. And so Jonah said, that's the only thing you've left for you to do. So they agreed, and they did, and you can see in that picture, they threw Jonah over out into the waves. There he is. And as Jonah was sinking into the water, God prepared a special fish. We often say Jonah and the whale, but the Bible says fish. So I don't know. So this fish came, huge fish, it would have to be huge, and it swallowed Jonah. And Jonah was inside that fish, the Bible says, for three days and three nights. What could you do inside a fish? Jonah didn't have much to do inside the fish, so he prayed. And he prayed, and he prayed, and he prayed, and he talked to God. And part of his prayer, I'm sure he said many prayers, but at least one of his prayers is in the book of Jonah. And he says to God um, that God heard him from the depths of the grave, like he was dying and calling to God for help. I called for help and you listened to me. He, God, he says, God, you heard me call you for help. And he says how God hurled him into the deep, threw him into the heart of the seas and the currents, the waves were swirling around him and going over him and all about him. He said he, he felt like he had been put in a place where God couldn't see him anymore, like sent away from God where God couldn't even see him. But he said, I will look again towards your holy temple. And the waters that threatened me, the deep that surrounded me, there was seaweed even around my head. Um, he said he sank down, down, down down and he felt like he was going to be away from God forever but he said you brought life back to me and it felt like my life was going away but I remember you my prayer is going up to you and he said that people who worship their idols those worthless idols they give up the grace that could be theirs, your grace and your love, your forgiveness. They give all that up. He said, I have a song of thanksgiving. I want to pray to you and sacrifice to you. And he said, I have made a promise to you and I will keep my promise. And then he says, salvation comes from the Lord. So... Jonah didn't have to stay in the fish 
for too long that fish made its way to dry land and then it spit Jonah out onto dry land. He must have looked a mess when he got out onto dry land. This time, when God asked him, Jonah, I need you to go to Nineveh and I need you to tell them that if they don't repent, their city's going to be destroyed. They're going to be destroyed if they don't repent and change what they're doing. This time, when God asked Jonah to go to Nineveh, Jonah agreed and said, Yes, I will go to Nineveh. So Jonah obeyed God and he finally went to uh, the city of Nineveh. And he started preaching to the people in the city and telling them what was going to happen. Nineveh was a huge city. It would take three days to walk across the city. It was such a large city. And it had hundreds of thousands of people in the city. So Jonah preached to them and he told them what was going to happen to them. That if they didn't stop what they were doing and, and worshiping idols and doing things that were not good, that were not obeying God, that God was going to destroy their city in 40 days. So the people listened and they did what Jonah said. They repented of their sins. They told God they were sorry. When the king of Nineveh heard about what Jonah was saying, even the king decided to get off of his throne. He took off his royal robes, took off his crown. He put on sackcloth and ashes to show how sad and how sorry he was. He put out a decree telling all the people of the city to not eat, to not drink, to fast, to pray so that God would um, forgive them and have mercy on them and would not destroy them. And God kept his promise to them. He told them, if you repent, I will not destroy your city. And so Jonah left the city and he went out up into the hills away from the city and he watched to see what would happen to the city. And the city just as um, God had said, was not destroyed. And instead of being happy about this, Jonah was actually angry. He was upset that the city wasn't destroyed. He said, now people are going to think that I am a false prophet. Look what happened. They're never going to believe me ever again. This is exactly what I was afraid of, of what was going to happen, that God, you are forgiving, you are long-suffering, and that um, the things I said are not going to come true because you've forgiven them. Well, while Jonah was out up here in the hills outside of the city, it was really hot. And God caused a plant to grow, a big leafy green plant, and it, a vine, and it came up and it, sh it provided shade for Jonah. And Jonah was so happy and relieved to have that shade. It made him so much more comfortable where he was. And then God sent a worm. And the worm started chewing on that plant. And it ate the bottom part of the plant. And the plant withered. And it started dying. And the shade was gone. And Jonah was upset. And he was angry that the plant was gone. And God reminded him, Jonah. You don't have a good reason to be upset about the plant. You did not make that plant grow. I made that plant grow. And he said, you know, you care about that plant and you're sorry about that plant being gone. I love these people. I made these people. There's a hundred thousand people, more than a hundred thousand people in this city. Shouldn't I care about their lives and the lives of their animals? It Shouldn't that matter too? You're upset about a plant, shouldn't I? be upset, concerned about their lives too? Jonah had a lesson to learn and we hope that he learned his lesson and that he decided to care about God's people in Nineveh and God's people everywhere and that God loves people and he wants people to repent and to say how sorry they are for the things that they've done wrong. Um, Jonah was not the only prophet. Jeremiah was another prophet 
who listened to God and obeyed him and God blessed him and Jeremiah didn't have an easy time he was put into an old well a cistern that was all muddy down at the bottom because people were upset with him about the things that he was saying about God and the things that he was telling them from God the people didn't like the messages so they did this to him and somebody said you know you've got it told the leader the king you've got to get him out of there he's gonna die in there and so they did they took him out of mud and God saved him and kept him and the important thing to remember about these people is that um, even though Jonah was afraid at the beginning um, all of them, Isaiah and Jonah and Jeremiah, they were God's prophets and they stood up for God and they did go to the people and they told the people God's messages for them. And we need to do that. We can do that today. We can tell other people about God and how much he loves them, that he is coming back. Terrible things are going to happen on our world before he comes, but he promises to be with us and to help us through all of those things. And that and then he loves us and he wants people to be ready when he comes back and he wants us to be ready too. So our memory verse reminds us of that. Our memory verse says, The Lord is long-suffering and abundant in mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression. It's found in Numbers 14, 18. And that just means that God loves us and he wants to forgive us for the things that we've done wrong and he can do that when we ask him he will do that so let's remember that and tell other people about that let's bow our heads and let's pray together dear father in heaven thank you for being with us thank you for blessing us help us to always remember how much you love us and that you want to forgive us help us to tell other people about you so that um, they'll be ready when you come and to tell them that you are coming soon and that you love them and you want them to be ready. Help us to be ready every day too. In your name. Amen.